Hello, I'm Professor Chris Busby. I'm visiting professor at the University of Ulster in Northern Ireland. I've been studying the effects of uh, ionizing radiation on human health now for probably 20 years. I'm the scientific secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risk based in Brussels. And I came here to this conference, which is a conference about nuclear waste repositories, essentially, in Sweden, uh, mainly in order to draw attention to the fact that the most important question in this area is the question of the health effects of low doses of ionizing radiation from these substances, these fission products, which are contaminating the environment. These substances, like strontium-90, cesium-137, plutonium-239, have never existed on Earth prior to the fissioning of uranium in 1945. But not only that, uranium itself has increased in the environment to an absolutely vast extent as a consequence of its mining and its refining to be used in nuclear power stations and also for, for, as a fuel in, in, in nuclear weapons and also more recently uh, in the wars that have been carried out in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. These weapons contaminate the entire global environment with uranium. Uranium has some very curious properties which have only been discovered in the last few years. These properties enable it to get inside the body, bind to DNA and act as an antenna for natural background radiation. And this idea explains a lot of the anomalous effects of uranium on health that have been discovered since, it's, uh, since the research has been carried out into uranium effects following the, Gulf, the first Gulf War, the effects in Gulf War veterans and the effects in children and adults in Iraq. So my message to this conference is to focus on the health effects of ionizing radiation from these pollutants. And of course, if these substances are coming out of nuclear sites all the time and contaminating the Baltic Sea, the Baltic Sea being um, essentially a closed system like a bathtub is slowly filling up with radioactivity. And people living close to the Baltic Sea will be suffering increased rates of cancer and probably increased rates of heritable defects in children. And this sort of research ought to be carried out, but of course is not being carried out. And the reason it's not being carried out is because the governments of all countries have been regulating these uh, the health of regulating the emissions from nuclear sites and the exposures of humans uh, on the basis of a false risk model, uh, a false relationship between exposure to radioactivity from these substances and the health effects that they produce. And this uh, risk model, which was developed in 52, 1952, in order to underpin the development of nuclear weapons, uh, has been broadly unchanged since 1952. It's, uh, it's held by a, a group of people called the International Commission on Radiological Protection uh, and it's at the headquarters of this uh, organization was for a long time in Sweden. It's now, it's now moved to Canada. But the, chair, the, the scientific secretary of this organization um, met with me here in Stockholm in April of last year and pointed out, or at least admitted, conceded uh, in, in a debate that we had, which was videoed, um, that the risk model is indeed false and cannot be used for uh, predicting or explaining the health effects of exposures to these substances like strontium-90 and cesium-137 and plutonium and so forth. And this is the most extraordinary thing. This is, if you like, the, the, the biggest public health scandal in recorded human history. People have been systematically contaminated and poisoned by these substances since their original release into the environment and since their major and massive release into the environment at the time of the global weapons testing, the nuclear fallout from atomic bombs. And it is this exposure from the nuclear testing from atomic bombs that is essentially the cause of the current cancer epidemic. And so my message to this conference was to concentrate on these health effects, to attempt to overthrow the dominance of the International Commission on Radiological Protection, to, allow, to, to force governments, and particularly the Swedish governments and governments of all of the nations around the Baltic Sea, to see that the, the, the scientific model, the science that they currently use to underpin to, to support the releases of these substances to the environment is just completely false. And the evidence of this is enormous. It is in the nuclear site leukemia clusters, it's in this cancer epidemic that I've that I just talked about, and in many, many other things which uh, one can find on the internet, on the website of the European Committee of Radi on Radiation Risk, 
which is www.uradcom.org or on many other websites. Thank you. Great.